Hi, my name is Jeremy, and on this channel I talk about color and light. Today I want to talk about the idea of static versus dynamic light. A while back I was watching a video about character design and about figure drawing, and the concept came up about static versus dynamic shapes. Now, static shapes are things with like perfect squares, perfect circles, lines that are parallel to one another, and these are not bad things. They are just a, a form of, of shapes. And then there's, once you add some perspective, now there's a little bit more dynamicism in the shapes because there's perspective. The lines aren't all perfect together. If you warp and change these objects, you can see more energy in it. They are more dynamic. Now, static dynamic, both of them can be used in art for different reasons, but they will have a different feeling, a different energy to it. If we look at statically posed characters, they tend to be a little bit boring, a little bit stiff. And this is kind of how a lot of artists start with their drawing. You know, they have very straight arms, very perfectly symmetrical characters just standing. They might be the right proportions to a human, but they're just not dynamic. And then as you learn to do gesture drawing, you can have much more dynamic poses where you feel the energy flowing through the body. The offset of the shoulders and the hips, they have a relation to each other. There's squash and stretch. There is an energy and seeking that energy will make the final illustration, the final drawing, have just a lot more life and a lot more energy in it. So I thought of this idea of like, why wouldn't we apply this to lighting as well? I see a lot of artwork that is very flatly lit. How could you take something and add more energy, add more lighting dynamics into it? And so it got me thinking this term could be used for lighting as well something that has that's very flat that is very static versus something that is dynamic something that is static or dynamic static dynamic and this applies also to photography this is not just about painting flat you can actually take photographs that have real light that that is physically correct and bounces through a scene but is still very static. It is kind of lit in an even way. This was given to me when I was doing an illustration for Lego many years ago and I had to turn it into this and make it one cohesive dynamically lit scene. Okay, so let's talk about what would make dynamic light versus static light. I think in the real world we see a lot of light that bounces all over the place and it's realistic, it's believable. This is the world around us. Most of the world has static light and it's just too much. Everything is overlapping. So where beauty exists is when you can see the energy of each of the components of light. So we could have direct light. You know, where is the lit side? And then dynamic light will have a light side and a shadow side. And you can clearly see this is the lit side, this is the unlit side. You will have also ambient light most likely plays into this. This is light that comes from the sky or from the bounce around a room and it, it comes directly in and it will be that soft kind of fill light. You'll have some ambient occlusion, some soft shadows that will mix with the hard shadows from a direct light source. You'll probably have specular highlights, the direct reflection of actual light sources. You'll probably also have indirect secondary reflections, indirect specular where you can see the reflections not from light sources but from the room itself and these are more dim and more subtle. And of course you'll be able to see the bounce light, the indirect light, the light that has come from the direct and then scattered on the floor and diffused into the scene. I think that dynamic light lets each of these components of light have their space. And then on top of this there's subsurface scattering, and there's fog, so many different elements. So let's look at some photography. Here's an egg. It's a photograph of an egg. This is real light on a real object, and this is very static just because the light is kind of even coming from everywhere. If I change the camera angle, I can get a little bit more gradients on this. If I start adding a little bit more light, now I can see there's a light side, there's a dark side, there's a shadow. So there's a shadowed area, there's some ambient occlusion underneath. If I change this, the uh, the environment that this egg is in, now we can get this to be far more dynamic. Clearly a light side, clearly a shadowed side, clearly some bounce from this cloth that I have, and you can see there's a core shadow in between the lit side and the bounce side and this dark kind of rim in between. Now this is dynamically lit, a very simple object. If I look at the same, take this outside, and if I were to line up with the sunlight, 
this is very statically lit, but if I just change my angle on the same thing, now this is more dynamically lit. I can see the energy flowing through each of the components of light. Here is a jar with some tea in it. And if it's flatly lit, this is just, this is okay. This is realistic. This is believable. But if I put it in the sun, this is more dynamic. There is now much more variety of colors. I can see the shadow. I can see all of the different components of the light. Here's another example of good dynamic light. I can clearly see the specular highlights. I can clearly see the lit side. I can see the dark side. I can see light that is bouncing off of this cloth and back up onto uh, this object. If I want it to be even more dynamic, I could increase the light, pull it back around so I can clearly see a lit side, a dark side, bounce. You can see this whole side is being lit with bounce light from the light that is diffusing off of this cloth. I can see subsurface scattering on the inside in this glow. I can see it here. All the different components of light each have their, their place. And this really tells me a lot about the shape of this object. I am looking at a three-dimensional object, but I only have a two-dimensional representation, but I can tell you information about the shape of this because the light has its place. You understand seeing this in the real world. This is dynamically lit. Now, if I add a little bit of color contrast in here, it becomes even more dynamic because I can see there's a rim light from this side and I can see the highlights from that rim light. I can see the direct light from there. They are balancing each other well. There are two different light sources from two different angles and they play nicely together. It is still very dynamic. Let's look at my friend Dobby the house elf. I lit him very, very flatly, and this is very static light. Light coming from everywhere, and it's a little hard to tell where the light sources are. I can see in his eye highlights that I have a light from the left and a big square light from the right, and it's just kind of flatly lit. Now, if I were to move those lights around, I get more shadows. I can clearly see the shape a little bit better. The colors are the same. The lights are just positioned a little bit differently. Now, if I add some color into those lights and soften them a little and move them around, now I can clearly see the form and the shape even better because there is, it, this is more dynamic light. Warmth is clearly coming from one side and cool is coming from another. Let's look at a rendered example of the same thing. So I have light coming from the side and I have a lit side and I have a dark side. And this is without any specular or bounce. I've split these layers. If I add bounce light into it, now I can see the component of the bounce and now the direct specular, this is from the light sources, and there's a rim light from the, from the back as well. And then I can see the indirect specular, which is the, the reflections of itself. And now this is a pretty dynamic render. Let's look at another render of this. If I give Dobie a uh, kind of subsurface skin-like texture and light this very flatly, this would be static lighting. And now let's do something very dynamic. So dynamic lets the light have its place. There's just one little beam of light and then it falls off and I can see there's red on the edge of the shadows and they can see the subsurface very clearly. I can see the light that is hitting the ground and bouncing up onto his face. It gives better shape and form to have the light be dynamic, static, dynamic. A while back I had done a artist repaint. I was thinking this is kind of an interesting way to look at light as well. You can have light that is kind of coming from everywhere and you don't know where the light sources are because there's just light everywhere. If we want to make this dynamic, this would be static. This would be dynamic. I can see light coming in. It bounces off the floor. The bounce comes up onto the ceiling. Each of the components of light are displayed here. So direct light, there's fog, there's bounce, there's kind of separation, there's fall off of light too. It's not all evenly flatly lit. It is dynamic because the energy spreads and then fades off in different, you know, like into the corners, it's darker up here than it is over here because that light is changing and falling off. It's very dynamic. I did an illustration a while back as a test when I was working on the film Ratatouille and we had this scene with a bunch of rats standing around and uh, you know painting a color key for this to say I could do it static like this and it could be believable light or I could do a dynamic like this where I have light and then bounce and subsurface and the fill light each of the components of light can you see the difference between these two they're both could be done realistically and believably but they just have a different look just like you can have a character that is posed standing perfectly still, perfectly symmetrical, and that might have its purpose, or you could have a character that's flying through the air and has a lot of dynamic energy. 
I could paint clouds and I could go outside and the majority of the day the light of clouds will be static. I mean, there's you can see light coming in, but this is kind of the standard view of the world. Most of the light that you will see every day is very static lighting. There's light bouncing every which way. So we want to make this look more beautiful than just the regular life. So I painted an alternate version. Can you see how much more dynamic this is? Because now I have sunlight that is only hitting one portion and there's subsurface scattering through the clouds. And then there's light that is coming from the horizon that is a more of a cyan type color. And you can see the wrapping and the change of the light. And in the foreground, there's less light, there's more shadow. So I can clearly see that each of the components of light have space to breathe and I can see all of the different pieces versus standard daylight, light's just kind of coming from everywhere. Here's a couple more examples of dynamic light that I painted from some references just to kind of take the scene and light it a couple of different ways to show how dynamic light changes the mood, the feel, and the colors that you have in it to just make it much more interesting. Let's look at a couple of examples from film to see this in action. So can you see the way characters are lit? There is direct sun from the back that is a nice rim light. Then there is fill from the sky that comes over here, and I can tell that they probably had what they would call negative fill, which is a big card of black that will be in the foreground to you know not let the character be flat. So I can see light coming from the left, and I can see light coming from the right, and then there is a dark core shadow in the middle. So this is probably done with negative fill, and it allows the light to really let me understand the character's face and all of the shape of the face because the light will wrap around and give me almost like a rim light from the right and from the left and I can understand it. Same here from different films. This lamp is lighting the character's face. There's a dark core, there's fill light in this core, and then there's clearly a rim light from the other side. All of the components just make it where it's very easy to understand. I can see direct light, I can see bounce light, and I can see fill light each of them having their space. Direct light, bounce light, nice core shadow, reflections in the eyes, light from this big source back here that makes a nice rim onto the character, light that is coming from the right and then bouncing up onto her face. I can clearly see all of the elements. This is a very nicely dynamically lit image. Outdoors, Again, I can see light from back here, some subsurface, and some kind of rimming of light through her hair. And from the left as well, there's a dark core shadow here, and I can see reflections in the eyes. It's just a beautifully lit image. Some more scenes from The Last of Us TV series. You can see each of the components of light. I think there's room for the characters lighting to really stand out. You can see that there was bounce light in this previous shot here there is light that is hitting the floor and then bouncing onto these characters. And when they cut to the shot of these characters, they're using that bounce light to help rim and separate the characters' faces. There's still some soft fill light. I can see some reflections, you know, and it's just beautiful. I love this one because there is really beautiful refraction that is happening and this little bit of, of saturated color and then light that is hitting the table and the character is lit by indirect light and it makes this beautiful rim light. And as the light diffuses off the table, it makes this like a kick light, a soft kind of wrapping around the character's face and then into darkness. So it, there's room for darkness to have its part. There's room for the light to have its part. And because of the darkness back here, it separates the character from the background. I've got almost two things that I can look at, the room and then the character's face. And nothing else is competing because the light is so dynamic. If everything was lit evenly, this character might blend into the background, but because they let this go dark and her side of her face go dark, I clearly look right there at her face, at her eyes, very first. The mood in the dark, you know, that this character's in this very dark world, it's just very dynamically lit. There's sunlight, but the sunlight doesn't have to hit the character. It's all indirect light, but I can see this rim light, I can see a fill light that wraps farther around the face. I can clearly see the eye highlights and the specular in here, and then it wraps into darkness here that separates from the background. Look at each of the components of light. The direct key light, there's fill light from the front, there's a nice bounce light that I can see coming up. I can look at the reflections too to see that they have a light that is down below shining up that will fill onto the character's face. 
Okay, look at this image. There's just really beautiful light here. So instead of having direct sunlight come onto the character, they have a very soft light that hits something off screen and bounces up onto the character. That becomes the key light on this character and gives a really nice shape and it kind of wraps the light around the face softly. So I have a light side, I have a dark side, and this soft kind of gradient in between. The quality of the light is just very beautiful and separates the character from the background. So this is a very dynamically lit background. Also, the dark part of her head is over the light background and the light part of her head you know, is over a slightly darker background. You get this kind of dark on light, uh, light on dark type of thing. It, it, it really separates the character from the background, makes this very appealing. It's very dynamic. I can understand the light in this. All right, this is the idea of static versus dynamic. Think about this when you're creating your own artwork. Is there enough room for the light to kind of have all of the different components to breathe and help tell your story? Where you can clearly see the light side, the dark side, the bounce, the specular highlights, the secondary highlights, the subsurface scattering, the fog, any of the different layers that are in here, giving everything a dynamic space so you can see that energy and it'll just make things more beautiful because they'll be easier to understand. Okay, so that's a new lesson for you today on something that I find really interesting. If you want to learn more, if you want to dig deeper, I also offer classes, courses, and mentorship in direct feedback on your work. If you want to go to lightingmentor.com to learn more, um, I will be happy to work with you and I'm excited to share these ideas with you. Thank you for visiting today and I look forward to talking to you again.